Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 9, Metals. We'll start off with corrosion of metals. Corrosion of metals is when metals slowly break down or get damaged because they react with things like air or water. Rusting is a common example of corrosion where iron and steel react with oxygen and water to form rust which weakens the metal. The conditions required for the rusting of iron and steel to form hydrated iron 3 oxide are water, moisture or water is necessary for the rusting process and oxygen, oxygen from the air is needed for the oxidation of iron. So, iron is a commonly used metal but it has a major drawback. It rusts when it reacts with oxygen and water, forming iron 3 oxide. During rusting, iron is oxidized. Over time, iron and steel objects develop a rust coating, leading to significant costs annually. To prevent rusting, it's important to keep oxygen and water away from the metal. Several methods can achieve this. Some common barrier methods to prevent rusting include painting. Applying paint to metal surfaces creates a protective layer that prevents moisture and oxygen from reaching the metal. Greasing. Coating metal parts with grease or oil keeps water and air away, reducing the chances of rusting. Coating with plastic. Covering metal with a plastic layer provides a physical barrier that protects it from corrosion. Zinc in galvanizing is another example of a method to prevent rusting. Galvanizing is coating iron or steel with zinc to prevent rust. The zinc layer keeps moisture and air away and helps protect the metal from corrosion. It acts both as a barrier and provides sacrificial protection. What is the barrier method? In galvanizing, zinc is coated onto the surface of iron or steel. This involves dipping the object into molten zinc. This zinc layer acts as a physical barrier preventing moisture and oxygen from reaching the underlying metal which protects it from rusting. But if the coating gets damaged, the zinc will still protect the iron by sacrificial protection. What is sacrificial protection? Zinc is more reactive than iron or steel. If the zinc coating is scratched or damaged, the exposed iron or steel will still be protected because the zinc will corrode first. This sacrificial protection means that the zinc corrodes instead of the iron or steel, offering extra rust protection. As we learned previously, in the reactivity series, more reactive metals like zinc lose electrons more easily than less reactive metals like iron. In sacrificial protection, a more reactive metal, that is zinc, the sacrificial metal, is used to protect a less reactive metal from corrosion. Because the sacrificial metal loses electrons more easily, it corrodes first when exposed to the environment. The sacrificial metal donates electrons to protect the less reactive metal, preventing it from losing electrons and rusting. In summary, zinc protects iron by corroding first due to its higher reactivity. Let's shift our focus to extraction of metals. Metals are found in rocks and ores in the Earth's crust. 
An ore is a type of rock that contains metal that can be extracted. Metals in ores are often combined with other elements forming compounds like iron oxide and aluminium oxide. To obtain metals, they must be separated from their ores using various methods. The method of extracting metals depends on how reactive they are. Some metals like gold and silver are found in their pure form due to their low reactivity and can be mined directly. They don't need any chemical process to extract. Metals lower in the reactivity series are easier to extract. Zinc and iron are found as oxides in their ores. Example zinc oxide, iron oxide and are extracted by reacting with carbon. Because carbon is more reactive, it displaces the metal in the compound leaving the pure metal. This process is known as reduction with carbon. Remember, reduction is a chemical process where a substance gains electrons or loses oxygen atoms. Metals like aluminium, which are very reactive, are extracted using electrolysis. In this process, electricity is used to separate the pure metal from its compound. Metals high in the reactivity series are harder to extract because they react strongly with other elements. And that is why they often need complex methods like electrolysis. Moving on, we'll discuss extraction of iron from hematite. Iron is extracted from its ore, hematite, using a blast furnace, which is a tall, chimney-like structure. The iron ore, along with other materials, is added at the top, while hot air is blasted in from the bottom. Through a series of reactions, molten iron is collected at the bottom of the furnace. So first, the burning of carbon. Coke, a form of carbon, is burned in the blast furnace. This reaction is exothermic, meaning it releases heat, which is needed for the process. The burning produces carbon dioxide gas. Next, the carbon dioxide gas reacts with more coke in the furnace to produce carbon monoxide gas. Carbon dioxide has been converted into carbon monoxide through reduction. Carbon monoxide gas then reacts with iron 3 oxide from the ore hematite to produce molten iron and carbon dioxide. This is the primary reaction where iron is extracted from its ore. Next, calcium carbonate or limestone is added to the furnace. It decomposes under high heat to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The calcium oxide helps to remove impurities from the iron ore. Finally, calcium oxide reacts with impurities in the iron ore, mainly silica, to form a slag. Slag is the waste material that forms from impurities. This slag floats on top of the molten iron and can be removed, leaving behind purified iron. In summary, the blast furnace process involves burning coke for heat, converting carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide, using that carbon monoxide to reduce iron 3 oxide to iron, decomposing limestone to remove impurities, and forming slag to separate impurities from the molten iron. Let's shift our focus to extraction of aluminium from bauxite. The main ore of aluminium is bauxite. Aluminium is a reactive metal above carbon in the reactivity series. 
Therefore, it cannot be extracted by reduction using carbon. So, aluminium is extracted from bauxite through the process of electrolysis. So, first, cryolite is added to aluminium oxide or bauxite in the electrolytic cell. Why is this done? The ions in aluminium oxide should be free to move so that electricity can pass through it. So for this, the aluminium oxide must be in molten form. However, aluminium oxide has a very high melting point. Cryolite lowers the melting point of aluminium oxide or purified bauxite and increases the conductivity of the electrolyte making the process more efficient and reducing energy costs. The mixture is placed in a large steel tank with carbon electrodes. An electric current is passed through the solution. During electrolysis, aluminium ions move to the cathode or the negative electrode where they gain electrons and form pure aluminium. Oxygen ions move to the anode or the positive electrode and form oxygen gas. So remember, the cathode is the negative electrode attracting positively charged cations. The anode is the positive electrode attracting negatively charged anions. To remember, cathodes attract cations, cat for both indicating the cathode is negative. Anodes attract anions, N for both, indicating the anode is positive. Opposite charges attract, so cathodes are negative and they attract positive ions. And anodes are positive, so they attract negative ions. The graphite lining is connected to the negative terminal of the power supply, making it the negative electrode or the cathode. The cathode attracts positive ions or the cations from the electrolyte, specifically the aluminium ions. These aluminium ions gain electrons at the cathode in a reduction reaction to form aluminium metal. Molten aluminium forms at the bottom of the cell. Several large graphite blocks are connected to the positive terminal of the power supply, making them the positive electrodes or anodes. The anodes attract negative ions or anions from the electrolyte, so they attract oxide ions from the electrolyte. At the anode, oxidation occurs as oxide ions lose electrons to form oxygen gas. At the anode, oxide ions lose electrons. This is oxidation because oxidation is when something loses electrons. And at the cathode, aluminium ions gain electrons. This is reduction. So reduction is when something gains electrons. An easy way to remember this is the mnemonic oil rig. For the electrolysis of aluminium oxide, these are the ionic half equations. At the anode, two oxide ions lose four electrons to form one oxygen molecule. At the cathode, an aluminium ion gains three electrons to form aluminium metal. Why do carbon anodes need to be replaced? The carbon in the graphite anodes reacts with the oxygen produced to form carbon dioxide. This reaction causes the anodes to wear out over time, which is why they need to be replaced regularly. So, in summary, in the extraction of aluminium, aluminium oxide is dissolved in molten cryolite and an electric current is passed through it. This process separates aluminium from its ore. Aluminium is formed at the cathode and oxygen is formed at the anode. That concludes part 3 of topic 9, metals. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here is a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks.
Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!